Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. Today, we have an amazing topic that is fueled by hatred and negativity. And of course, I'm kidding. It's just that we're talking about trends and this is usually a topic that a lot of people hate because we don't want to be fall victim to consumerism, but that's actually eventually what we do at the end. And that's the whole purpose of this channel. But no, it's not, of course not. And we're talking about deep fashion topics as usual. But sometimes, sometimes we also have to analyze what is going on currently on the market. And when I say market, I mean right on the street, when people walk. And it's okay to be judgmental sometimes. I mean, we're just among us, okay? So nobody takes this personal. There were a lot of things mentioned when I asked my story and a lot of people gave their comment about stuff they hate and it's stuff that's in my wardrobe and that I wear every day. So I was like, what the hell? Why do you think like that? So nobody takes this video personal. We're talking about just trends and we cannot see anymore. And we speak about the worst trends. And it's just, you know, March is just like over right now. It's just three months into it. And we already have significant trends that we cannot see anymore. And they need to leave. And we need to all fight for a deeper knowledge in in fashion and also consumerism. So actually, this video is super educational and is bringing fashion forward. It's not just an outbreak of emotions, as someone would maybe call it. So you know, if you like this channel, if you like me as a person, if you like me as your best friend, if you think you would like to adopt me, don't forget to support me on my Patreon that I have now since one week. Super proud, very happy about the one supporting me already. Don't forget to support me there. If you like what I do here, don't forget to join the Discord with the craziest, genius people I have met in my life. Honestly, I was not expecting this exists in the world. I was thinking like, yeah, of course, there are some weird forums and chat rooms where you can speak with anonymous people. No, you literally meet people that the, you share the same destiny with, that you share the same love with, that you share the same humor with. Yeah, we're so many in the Discord, so... The link is down below if you want to join the Discord. My Instagram is a bit lame, but maybe you like my personal stuff. So we're starting with, with the trends. And honestly, there's so many things you mentioned. And what I love the most is because this is a channel of chaos and there's no structure. This is something relevant for my math teacher. He would have gone crazy if he would have seen today what kind of list of worst trends I have because you know what you send me things like a shade of color versus a core trend style versus an era so things you cannot compare easily with each other that I actually would have had to break them down to to a reasonable meta to make it comparable you know so it's a product you know what I don't do that here I'm not doing that I'm comparing products versus color what is better a shoe or, or the color red who wins? Who wins the competition? Shoes or the color red? This is what we're going to talk about today. Let's start with it now because it's much to do, a lot to do. I know I love to have some storytelling about products and I love to put everything into context because I usually think, because I'm such an empathetic person, I love to put stuff into context to make everybody understand it and be myself as well. And I think things get more valuable when I get the real reason behind everything, like construction, production, design ideas. But you know what? In terms of these trends today, we don't care about that. We, we don't care about the story behind it. We don't care about the purpose behind it. We care. Can I individualize it? Can I turn it into something personal? Is it something I can only put on my body and then I wear it like anybody else? And we're an army and we can fight for something I'm not yet aware of. But we will be a cute army all dressed the same. Or is it something that you can adapt to your wardrobe, that you can implement into your wardrobe and turn into something more personal. That's something that is relevant for me when it comes to trends. Since I stole this invention of you guys in the US, we have S, A, B, C, D, F. I don't know what you did with E, but E doesn't, doesn't exist. It's gone. So we don't have any E tier. And you know what? We don't have a chronological order. We don't have real criteria. The only criteria I have is, it's, is it something you can put on your individual body and make it look like it's yours? Or does it always look like it's Massimo Dutti? I'm starting with one thing that you mentioned. Let's start. Number one, glazed Timberlands. When I first read that, I was like, what? Yeah, you guys hate that apparently. And I know it's a collaboration with the designer. Vineda Carta, if I'm not wrong. I think she has an interesting style. I think it's something where it has kind of the core in this whole go up core thing as well, but very Americana and very oversized, but everything looks like it's construction wear. I like that style, but it's not something new, I think. Interesting, 
my first thought was interesting. Necessary? No, absolutely not. Do we need another collaboration with Timberlands? No. Everybody knows the only good Timberlands out there are the OG Timberlands, you know, like the ones I was wearing when I was 18 that I bought secondhand because I thought they were so cool. That's why Glazed Timberlands, where have I put them? Honestly, I think it's so trendy and I think it will not stay relevant. And I'm not speaking about the heeled Timberlands, you know, that were like super relevant in the 2000s. R&B stars were wearing them. I think Khalees was wearing them and I was really mesmerized by them because that was something new. Uh, Timberlands suddenly turned like super feminine and interesting. Those were super cool, but these glazed ones, it's such a trend and that will not stay relevant at all. I don't know if it elevates anybody's style. I'm giving it an S. And to explain my way of proceeding with this tier list, S is the worst of them all, okay? So S is just the worst trend. We don't want to see, we don't want to give any chance to people wanting to wear this and wearing it actually on the street. And F are the ones where I feel personally attacked. So F is kind of the mediocre worst trends where I'm like, come on guys, don't. Be so critical and S is like no chance, no chance. The next thing you mentioned, dresses over jeans. And the, I have to say the first time I read it, I was like, okay, what's wrong with dresses over jeans? Like, what's the problem? But then I figured what I personally like is not dresses over jeans, but like dresses over anything else but jeans actually. And even wool pants. I don't want to always say wool pants, but I mean like more sophisticated pants. I think it's more interesting because it does really turn your style into a more sporty look. Usually if you wear like a vintage dress over your jeans. And I think it's always nice to break that style. So you wear something more elegant underneath or maybe even a wider skirt or a longer skirt but something that is a bit more interesting in an artistic manner. These long dresses with jeans are for me too easy replicated from the 90s and that's why I don't like it so much. Where do we put it? Dresses over jeans for me it's like it's not hardcore you know for me it's a D. It, it's a D for me. Let's put it into D. Next thing skinny jeans. And I think that's crazy because I know we all said last year already like, yeah, skinny jeans are going to come back so crazy and they will be so relevant after our wide, wide, wide pant obsession for the last 10 years that I was not really still a firm believer that skinny jeans will really have a chance. Now that I saw the Balenciaga runway and so many runways and skinny jeans really walking down there, they're back. Yeah, they're, they're very much back. I thought I would say just for the sake of it that I accept them, but to be very honest, they don't do so much. I think there's just a certain type of skinny jeans that I like and it's a bit of a straighter form. Um, what's important is I think that you have an interesting body type when you wear skinny jeans and when it's turning into these leggings slash skinny jeans that's what I don't like. I don't really think it's it's elevating your personal style currently. It's a bit of a basic look because the jeans are usually not of the highest quality. I'm sure they're like super high quality skinny jeans and everybody that wants to wear skinny jeans go for it. I'm sure you can style it also but I don't think it's really something that is improving your personal style and I really have never in my life seen a skinny 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 jean where I was like wow that's an amazing washing that's amazing material usually it's really like full stretch that's the only purpose so skinny jeans are for me it's not an S I would give it an A you know like skinny jeans are an A but they will rot down I think so the next thing wedges super unpopular opinion I don't hate wedges I know everybody hates wedges and I'm not thinking about these espadrille ones, you know, these are terrible and need to be forbidden. I'm gonna ask for a lawsuit. I don't want anybody to wear espadrilles at all. But I think wedges, I mean, it's a very historical heel and yes, we're back to storytelling and, and, and story is important, you know, because it's always an amazing backup to have a reason to like something that people hate on. And wedges are one of those. I mean, we have vintage Margiela that has wedges, for example, so now Nobody can say anything against me because I have the Magella coat on me and nobody can say anything against Magella. That's pretty cool. Like whenever you hate on something and you say Magella did it, like you pass, you pass. I think wedges are okay. For example, there are also beautiful Dries van Noten ones, which are very extreme. They're beautiful Gisnander ones. I think it's, it very, very much depends on the style of the shoe. Honestly, I think 95% of the brands are terrible at doing it. And that's why we have this misconception that they're terrible, but there are amazing forms. So I like wedges and, be and because I like wedges, I'm going to give it an F. I'm going to give it an F and I will, you will see the images everywhere. So it will make sense. This will make a lot of sense. Next thing, 
very popular right now, very 2024 trend, Capris. You know Capris, these longer, short and slender version of the short that we know. To be very honest, yes, it's again very much a duplication of, of the 90s right now. The only reason why we see it right now is because the 90s to 2010s are striking back. But I also think it comes also back with a stealth wealth look. It's very horse riding club, it's very sailing boats club kind of look. And if you don't turn it into this 90s DKNY Calvin Klein look, it looks ridiculous. But if you do it in a very minimal look, it can look pretty cool. So for me, Capri's get a D. Like they're socially accepted, but also like for who? Who? Who's wearing them? I'm not wearing them. And if I'm not wearing, no, of course not, but I'm also not wearing them, so. Very popular, something that was mentioned several times, several times. And I'm not surprised because I also, I'm not a huge fan of it, mesh ballerinas. You might know our girls from The Row. I don't know if they invented it, but there are like so many brands right now doing it. I know The Row has it and of course Alaya. I think that's the most prominent one, the most best-selling and the most random trendy one that we see. And I think I'm, I feel pretty sorry because I know a lot of people that have them. I have friends that have them that really have amazing style. And I mean, it was something new. It was a new ballerina shape that didn't really exist like that before. And they bought it and it's spicy. It's damn spicy for a pair of ballerina that you can wear like honestly four weeks per year and that's it. It's not a shoe, it's not one of those ballerinas that you can wear with socks. So it's kind of ridiculous and it's very expensive. And then everybody else bought them as well. Everybody and their mother bought the mesh sandals. Like, so mesh sandals are getting, mesh sandals are getting, is it a, is it an S? Is it an S? I it's an A also. Yeah, it's like, yeah, mesh ballerinas is an A and it will die, die out soon. So. Rest in peace. Because now something else results out of mesh sandals and it's like ballet flats. I think ballerinas are very critical because again, it depends so much on the styling. A plus point to the ballerina, it is possible to style it in completely different ways. Honestly, I don't mind the ones, not the vintage ones, but like the very classic shapes, not the Chanel ones. Like don't, please don't get Chanel ballerinas, like it's terrible quality. The shoe itself is not meant to be walked on and used every day. And of course you should never wear your shoe every day, but it's like, don't buy these iconized prestigious items that stand for a weird form of luxury. Even if you like the design sometimes, because it's, it's, it should always be important to you what a brand stands for. And if it's vintage Chanel, and certain Karl Lagerfeld items, it's okay. It's, it shows that you have like a distinguished understanding of fashion. So if you love the Chanel ballerinas for the historical value or whatever, you should not do it anymore. But instead, they're, they're beautiful, very minimal ones. And I think I'm not good at styling ballerinas and I don't think that they're comfortable at all. Like I need a soul, guys. I need a proper soul for my feet. But there are so many people that can pull it off and it looks cute and you can wear it also like on co in colder weather with, with thicker socks. I think it's cute. I think it's nice. And I know it's everywhere, but I think it's, again, if, if you see, see these ballerinas in these TikTok uh, joggers, um, old vintage jacket and like two hair ties and like, uh, you look like you're, you're part of a trend army it's definitely not cool, but you have the chance to really upstyle it. And it's a very minimal and basic fashion item in my opinion. So I will put ballerinas, is it F? No, I think it's a D. And let's say it's a D, the ballerina. I, I still think it's very hard to pull it off in a good way. Still always has a tiny bit of connotation of like <sighs> ballet flats. This is a tough one, huh? No, it stays in D. So next thing, somebody said just like, red accessories you know it's just red accessories i wasn't aware this was a thing also i mean i was seeing like red tights more often i think like in editorials and something and i have red tights i kind of like it and i'm always a fan of being able to use a accessory item and like upgrade my look very easily without changing my whole look. I do think it's a bit of a trendy thing i don't think people were wearing it two years ago so it's definitely like a trend thing Apparently it is more common on the net than I was aware of. I don't believe that red tights will be part of a wardrobe for a longer period. I think tights overall, yes. I mean, I saw like um, knit tights as well. A friend of mine recommended me vintage tights, which were beautiful, like a lot of old Armani actually that I found on Vinted. I, it's true that red tights are very trendy and trend focused. So probably not the best 
piece to implement into your wardrobe. On the other hand, it's also not something very expensive and usually you keep it for a long time. You can always use it. So I cannot hate it. It's a C. I think red tights is a C. You can go for it. You don't break your bank account for it. It might not be very much you, but it's okay to experiment. I think red, red accessories are okay, I think. Let's not be so critical. Then we have boxer shorts. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Absolutely aligned with the person that sent this to me. <gasps> I can absolutely not see it anymore. And I think it kind of started with this double pants trend. I know very well that, is it Margiela? You know, with these boxer shorts lurking out. And at the beginning, I was obsessed with it. I loved it. It, it was so nonchalance, not caring, like having your pants look out. I mean, I like it if you have like a very streamlined look, if there's something slightly disturbing, not too much. I saw it so much on the runway, but now that it hit like all fast fashion retailers, and when I say fast fashion, I think I can even get it like, get like short double shorts in a one euro store here. And there are so many bad versions on the street in the worst forms, like they have it in their, on their chinos. And I still think if you do it like in a very cool, genuine way, it can look interesting. And since it's been duplicated, like in the worst, worst ways we can imagine, I really cannot see that trend anymore. No, boxer shorts for me get, I say um, A because I know what's about to come. Okay, let's say it's A, like... You lose if you buy it, but if you already have it in your wardrobe and you can pull it off, do it. But don't buy any items where the boxer short is like sewed into the pant and then it looks like you have a dropped waist. And then we have, for example, a trend which is an aesthetic and it has this beautiful name, which is called Mob Life. <gasps> I hate this name so much. I hate this name so much. Mob Life. Honestly, it's the worst name ever I heard for a trend. First of all, like who wants to be a real life mob wife? Like I, I understand that there's some, it's, it's, it's an abstract form, but also it's like absolutely not an abstract form because you literally dress up like old 80s mob wives. Like that's almost a crime. Second of all, getting like a vintage fur, which is also not so much better by the way. And I think I don't like so much what is going through the heads of the people who think they really live the mob wife trend to the core. Of course, I don't have anything against self-confidence and I think we should all embrace that more but not hiding behind a costume like this. Terrible, terrible to build up your self-confidence in this way. And I think this is one of the worst trends ever where everybody looks the same because it literally consists of two items. I mean, I think, I mean, it's definitely the fur coat and then it's maybe, I think it's usually like flared pants, a hair ribbon or something, or like a band, it's anything that looks like 70s, 80s usually. And have sunglasses. I think sunglasses and the coat are essential here. So this is for me the absolute worst of fashion trends. I think it, it just exists for a few months, right? Thank God the summer is coming and it might die out. It's so funny that seasons can kill trends. I love it. Absolute S. Stop it. Stop it now. Um, Flip-flops. This is again a bit like the ballerina, I fear, because it's so generic. I mean, I know there are certain countries that are like dependent on flip-flops, so of course, no word about that. But I know that if you live in a city, it can be worn in like the most ridiculous ways. Honestly, I like the downcycling of a look if you feel too chic sometimes, that you can wear flip-flops and it immediately turns into a more sporty look. I think it came out like five or six years ago and it worked very, very well with these Celine looks that were too sophisticated and beautiful and then you just wore these leather flip-flops. I mean, I think that was like the game changer for the era of flip-flops when suddenly leather versions came out. And But I saw now that already Chanel has got some out. I don't know if they had one before. If you want to wear flip-flops, or Havaianas or anything with cute stuff in summer, I think it's okay. I don't like the sound that they make, but a lot of sandals do that. So honestly, I give flip-flops an F. I give them a... I give flip flops an F, it's okay. I think we can do it and um, you can integrate it so well into your wardrobe. Something that was mentioned very often, very, very often, and I was surprised because I was honestly not thinking that everybody had it on their radar already. Boat shoes. And yes, of course, boat shoes are everywhere now, thanks to Miu Miu. Thank you, Miucha, for bringing back boat shoes. You guys hate them. A lot of people hate them, and I think it's a bit the fact what boat shoes stand for. And if we are all kind of, kind of millennial-ish, we all kind of grew up also with a Timberland boat shoe, 
To be honest, I liked them. And I think it was even in the music industry, a bit like the Timberland boots, which was worn by all the papas. We see it now again with the preppy look. I mean, I think it comes with the preppification of the current trends, you know, the we have a lot of polos coming back. We have belts coming back. We have skinnier jeans coming back. And in between these things, we also have boat shoes coming back. And I do think you're very restricted when it comes to your aesthetic. It looks cute in the summer and you know, in Miu Miu, where you have these anklets and stuff, it's super cute. I love the look, I, I love the look, it's really nice, but I do think it's not a long lasting trend that you can keep in your wardrobe forever. So boat shoes are for me S. Actually, you don't need it at all. You should not participate. It's not a trend that helps at all, I think, to elevate one's wardrobe. And whatever is your aesthetic, that in an elevated form, which means a more concentrated, a better form. Next thing I have personally a hard time with because I love it so much, are micro shorts. Yeah, micro shorts, I know. It's weird. It's weird because you know what? Technically, they're not shorts anymore. It's just undies. And it started with the undies trend. I mean, we, we had these undies everywhere. And it's not that I feel super comfortable wearing it because usually I wear something long over it, but I do think it's a new silhouette that didn't exist for before. I think shorts usually look very sporty or like too elegant. You know, like these very elegant short short firms that look like they're like all, almost like for evening attire or something. I think these undies are so atypical. It's so unusual. It's irritating. That's how unusual it is. And if you wear it, people are super irritated and they don't like it. And that's why I like it. Usually people do have a struggle understanding that stylistic choice when they have a look like that. I think it's something we didn't have before and it, we have it now as a trend for over one and a half years. So I do think it is something that stays longer in our wardrobe. I bought undies as outerwear pants, I think like five years ago. Still one of my favorite things. So I still believe micro shorts are very relevant. I think they're very elegant. I think it's an interesting silhouette. Again, I don't think it's something everybody likes, but I do believe it is an absolutely new silhouette. The undie proved everyone that it's here to stay. And you know what? I don't care, it's getting an F. It's getting an F from me the very, very cropped micro short. I think you can pull it off. I think it's interesting. We should dare also a bit more. We need to dare a bit more. Next trend you absolutely hate, and we have just two more to go, is bags with charms. Yeah, I don't know, that's absolutely right. Honestly, you guys are so much smarter than I am because I would never have thought of that, but yes, Bags with charms are everywhere. They're everywhere. And I mean, I know we, I think the most famous one is the current Balenciaga one, where like the version without the charms is 5K and the one with the charms is 10K. It looks like you've been to like a one euro shop in Paris and just, but that's a Balenciaga vibe, you know it. I think it is something, again, that comes like from the 2000s very much. I think it's cute whenever I see like little charms on the back, I like it. I personally don't think it's practical at all, but if you have something like the old city bag or something, I think the city bag is like the most common one where you see that, I think it's okay. I think we need to keep that also in an individual form, like with your very own charms. And buying a bag with attached charms is a bit like buying into something too much. It's like not having a clue of minimalism and, and quality and walking into the row and buying everything. That's a bit like buying a bag with charms. Charms are the, they are like the epitome of memories. I think bags with charms, it's also not that terrible, you know, I don't know. But it's also something that is not going to say, I think it's it's a C. It's a C, I think. I would say it's a C. Yeah, we also need to be a bit, I don't know, I'm, am I too critical? I'm or too less? Somebody said something, I literally laughed out loud when I read that. She said fringes and then sensory nightmare. I just never thought of the fact that fringes do have something creepy about them. You know that fringes are a bit creepy. They look a bit unusual. Like, what is this? All this? I would say, I think in every summer summary trend report ever in the world, I always read fringe. Kind of always relevant. And now with the new Chloe wave of bohem style coming back and like the 2010s fully striking back with wedges and flirty romantic dresses. I think fringes also have like their reason to come back or like the Stella McCartney Falabella bag with fringes. And I think every bag out there exists today, every successful bag in a fringe version. I love it when it comes to clothing. I love fringes when it comes to clothing. I have these Princess Schooler shorts. I have like fringes here, which is super 
funny and ridiculous. That's why it's cool. But usually if it's implemented on good quality pieces, it, it creates a beautiful silhouette, a playful one. And if it's a good quality and fabric, it's, it looks amazing. But it's true that I'm not a huge fan when it comes to the bags. And it's also kind of true that when it comes to the bags, I think the quality very quickly declines because, I mean, you have these very thin leather pieces hanging around. So obviously you will hit and use and touch everything all the time. So very very quickly it can turn into this bad vintage effect bag. So fringes, I think, uh, as well as being a sensory nightmare to some people, I think it's a B when it comes to bags. So I think it can, it can be B tier. Yeah. Other thing that was mentioned that was very interesting because again, it is not really comparable to any of the products is the Löwe logo. So, or Löwe, but it's, it's pronounced Löwe because it's a German name. Oh my God, this was also so enlightening to me because I was like, oh my God, yes, I cannot see it anymore. And I don't know if it's their marketing or because they're everywhere on socials. They have great social media, by the way, actually for a brand. But I think this tank top killed us all. I think that tank top with the jeans killed us all and didn't give us a tiny bit of a chance to like this logo anymore. These jeans, they look so bad and horrible. Honestly, it really looks like the ones you can buy on AliExpress or whatever. I'm sure you could get them one-to-one. -one. Um, nobody bought it like with a bad purpose on mind uh, and only for the logo probably, but at the end of the day, you just have the logo. So yeah, the Louvre logo right now is pretty much an S um, and I love the bags. I love the shoes. I mean, Love is one of my favorite brands. I love Jonathan Anderson. Something mentioned Mary Janes. Very interesting as well, because I know Mary Janes are being loved like crazy currently. I think it's, I think Mary Janes are the new ballerinas. So I think last year was the ballerinas and this year is the Mary Janes. So it's true that it's a bit overcompensated right now, but still Mary Janes are as old as mankind kind of. Yeah. And okay. And even the fact that Magella bring out like so many new Mary Jane models, it looked a bit like, okay, we did a trend report. We did a Google search SEO report. We need to bring out some Mary Janes. Let's just do some Frankenstein stuff and invent new Mary Janes. So I would say Mary jeans it's a very classical shape depends if you get like a very classical pair cannot say anything it's a very personal piece that you can wear in all kinds of ways that's what i appreciate about it so i would say mary jeans i will give it a d mary jeans get a d from me yeah i think that's fine no this is a very long video guys i hope you like this video uh, don't forget to support me on patreon if you like my video content which you absolutely do i know you love it i know it's the only video you wait for every week and you want to help me build this up even more you support me on patreon if you do believe in me the link is down below below yeah my german is sometimes taking over is below is da unten and uh, don't forget to join the discord server we're the most insane and coolest people aka the most coolest people ever you will ever see in your life unpopular opinion i think uh, the kindest sweetest and smartest people very rare to find smart kind these two things never, never exist. And well-dressed. Very rare too. Yeah, that's insane. Join the Discord server if you want to find like-minded people that adore fashion as much as you do and that like it more than your best friends. Stay with your best friends, they're relevant as well, but you need some fashion people so you don't die in your inner self. Subscribe to this channel. Yeah, I actually have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel on my Instagram, that's it.